Today you are, you've come here to learn about money, to learn about, you must understand something before you interact with something, before you, you own it, before you, you know, you, you take possession over the same. So um, in my life, I'm a very uh, ambitious guy, somebody who has worked for many years for the government and finally while working I was opening my eyes. You know, I remember sometime one of my pastors uh, along the way in my life, and he said, when you are praying, don't close your eyes. Because when you close your eyes, whatever you are praying for might pass by. Like, Yeah, so, uh, and that one was very interesting. I took it so lightly, like in it was real. That you, as you, as you advance in this life, as you, as you work on your life, you must make sure that you are always on guard, you are always on watch, you are looking where the opportunity is coming from. Now, most of us were brought up from different backgrounds. We were brought up from different backgrounds like um, uh, you, some of us went to school, to whichever level you went. But one thing I've always said, that there is no relationship between money and education unless you are educated financially. Not, not the education that you, you qualify uh, uh, you know, in, in uh, a college to become an accountant or a finance manager. You know, have you seen accountants who are also very broke? You've seen them, isn't it? Because we are trained to balance the, the accounting. That is credit and debit. Yes, but, you, but they, they, they don't have the skill of looking for money. I came to realize that there is a difference between you know, chasing money and allowing money to work for you. It was until uh, 2008 I had gone for um, advanced training in my field in US when I sat down in a meeting like this and uh, guess the guys who were doing the presentation is none other than the two people who have become my mentors and my, you know, my, my coaches in life on issues to do with entrepreneurship, issues to do with the money, issues to do with where money is in the world. And uh, without wasting time, I want to discuss one of the things that um, uh, I learned in that meeting. And this is the economic quadrant. The economic quadrant, the economic quadrant is uh, found in uh, Robert Kiyosaki's book, a uh, book uh, entitled the business of the 21st century. He mentioned it in his early book that is Rich Dad, Poor Dad, um, slightly, but when he talked about it so well in the economic world, in, the, in the, business, uh, the business of the 21st century, he was able to articulate it so clearly so that I was able to, to see and to know where I was by then and where I want to be. You see, number one, you must know where you are. Sadio. You must know where you are and then ask yourself, am I supposed to stay here or am I supposed to be somewhere else? And that I got it clearly using the economic quadrant. The economic quadrant, yeah, economic quadrant, economic quadrant. Economic quadrant is nothing other than four ways of earning money in the world. There are four ways of doing the quadrant up there economic quadrant. quadrant. It is you here. Quadrant. Economic quadrant. What is economic quadrant? Economic quadrant is four ways of making money. Four ways of earning money. We don't make money, we earn money. <laughs> yes, we don't make money, we earn money. And there are two ways on the left side and two ways on the right side. Now, the two ways on the right side, on the left side is E and S, and this one is B and I. Now, let's discuss each independently. This E stands for employee. An employee is an employee. An employee is a guy who has a job. This guy has what? He has a job. He has a job. How many of us are employed here? You are on salary. Wow. 
Uh -huh. You can see guys who fall under the category of E. You have a job. So what do you do? You trade your time and skill for money. That is why you find these guys always uh, talking about time is money. In fact, when I was late, some of us already were complaining. This guy is wasting our time. He doesn't know that time is money. <laughs> so these this, this guys here, they are people who are employed. They are under the masses of an employer. The employer tells you report to work at 8 and leave at 5. Is that not true? And then the, the same employer tells you, you will be earning a salary, but not every day. You'll be earning some money, not every day. You'll be earning every end month. And it is not according to your needs, but according to your job group. Are we together? Yeah. So this guy here is under the masses of the employer. You even don't go and leave according to your own volition. You don't choose to say today I want to go on holiday, I want to go to Mombasa, I want to go to Naivasha, I want to go to Dar es Salaam, I want to go to Kampala. No, you cannot decide because at the end of, in the beginning of every year, there is uh, the, the leave plan for everybody. You don't choose which month because you are under the masses of who? The employer. Yeah. So this guy here who is an employee works until he retires. This is a guy who is consoling himself by saying, you know, I would just want to, to work for so that I may be pensionable. That's why the, you find that statement, we are permanent and pensionable. Little do you think of the downsizing. You know downsizing? The, the retrenchment. You remember people who were retrenched in this country so many years ago who were working in the post office, were working in Kenya Power, working, they were retrenched. You are even given something branded, you know, gold, golden, hand, golden handshake, yeah? Golden handshake. And somebody is just given 200,000, it is a golden handshake. One, you know, 800,000. And then by the end of the day, that person comes home, he has no, no financial knowledge on what to do with that money, and they, they are all over here. They are so desperate people. So this employee has a job. He straight time for money. You give your time, and skill for money. Let's talk about another guy here. This guy here is called self-employed. Self-employed is a guy who owns a job. This one owns a job. He doesn't work, he doesn't want to employ anybody, but he wants to he wants to do it himself because he is fearing that he will lose more money. So he'd rather do it himself. So this guy also is self-employed. He trades time for money as well. Trace time and skill for money. This is somebody who has own business. You have your own business, you open your own shop, you have your own portion meal, you have your own anything, you know, welding site, whatever. And if you are not there, will you make money? If you don't open that shop, will you will you make money that day? Okay. So if you open your shop, you open your business. You can sell. Yeah? If you close it, you, there is no income. So this guy again depends on this employee. When the employee gets money, this guy can sell goods and services comfortably. To go promote He can sell goods and services comfortably. When this one doesn't have money, he's broke. This one gives goods and services on credit. When this one gets paid, this one, uh, uh, he, pays, he pays the debt, and this one stocks what he had, uh, he had not stocked because there was a lot of money outside. Now, what happens? After stocking, both of them run out of cash. So these guys become broke. Both of them become broke. You understand? Yes. And then now, these two people, this one, this one works, wakes up early and sleeps early. So now the podcast is Ambini. So this one wakes up early and sleeps early. It's five from eight to five. And this one is, this one wakes up early and sleeps late. If you are running a shop, what time do you wake up? You wake up as early as three because there is that vehicle bringing bread and bringing milk. Yeah. So after waking up at three, do you go back to sleep? Yeah. No. And then this guy stays longer. Thank God for COVID-19 that uh, the curfew is making him to go back home very early. You understand? So this guy uh, sleeps longer. Do we need young people here or old people above 60? Yeah. We need young people here who can wake up early and sleep late. But you realize that most of the guys who are employed, they say, when I retire, I will open my own business. And I do not, which nobody will disturb me. They forget that they are actually disturbing themselves. Have you seen retired people? 
in the in the village they have come back from the cities they come and put up a very big shop and they are seated in a sinatabu seat yeah now uh, it's not even you find them dosing all the time and alala to even compare not and a zoom now and if you know it he's not even able to see yeah he's losing losing sight and he's doing the wrong thing in fact this place the, the self-employed guys are supposed to be young and vibrant yeah but it doesn't you don't wait until you retire to employ yourself you are actually destroying yourself so these two people unfortunately ladies and gentlemen these are the most broke people in the world the most broke people in the world the most broke people who are complaining of there is no money in circulation uh, recently there was an increment of uh, uh, fuel I saw uh, the tank yesterday it was reading a 101 and the other day it was 70 it was 84 my was 70. When, when you have money you don't even treat those you don't even care about whether we're waking Mia or waking Gapi you don't care you understand now those people who fall under this category they are now complaining now complaining these guys here if they want a pay increment they have to go on a strike you know teachers in this country what the SRC has released because the SRC is the one which is controlling the, the, the controlling the the the, 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 the pay for those employees who are working for the government and they cannot shoot the expenditure they cannot they cannot give you more money than your job together so guys and these guys are the ones who are always available for political manipulation because they they are they are always broke if a politician comes over and give them 50 bob 50 bob they can they can even leave their shops and go and and uh, and meet at cap Catet. You know, they are the most broke people in the world. They control, they actually share, they share, sorry, they do what? They share. They share 3% of the world economy. 3% of the world economy is circulating between these two people. And the population on this side is 97% of the world population. Now you can, you can just conclude for yourself that that is why you are always broke. After getting payment, after this guy is paid, the employee, how long does the salary last in your wallet? How long does it last in your wallet, Pamela? Yeah, it, it comes even when it's already finished. Yeah. yeah, because it's already spent. You're just delivering it to the beneficiaries. Give it to the, your landlord, give it to the nearest shop at your home, who is already, you know, the, the shop that is, um, that you took the, 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 the credit, yeah? So these two people are the most broke people in the world. Now you're wondering, where is the money? <laughs> where is the money? If these people are sharing 3% of the world economy, where is the money? It is with a very few people who are, who are like you, who spend their time to acquire the financial knowledge. Now, let's talk about the right side of the world in this quadrant. We have B. B stands for big business builders. Business builders. They are business builders who, these guys, they own systems. They own what? They own systems, they own systems where people is equal to money. They own systems where people is equal to money. You know, the more people you have in your system, you know, systems are like, well, it might not be the best example, uh, systems are like, um, like, uh, like Safaricom, the, the, the tele telecom service uh, provider, yeah? You know, the more people come in, the more they make money. How much is a SIM card? How much is a SIM card? 50 bob. But with your smartphone, I saw you with a smartphone. With your smartphone, are you able to, do you use 50 bob per day? No. That 50 bob is just a foot in the door technique. You know, just kuweka tu mungu kwa mlango hivyo. Alafu wakisha ingia, anatawala kila mahali. You understand? So, you know, you just use 50 bob for you to spend even 500 bob every day. You like it or not. Because when you join in, you are a member of Safari Club. You are enjoying call services, SMS, bundle services, M-Pesa, M-Shwari, Okwa Jazi, Fuliza, name it. You know, and all of them. I just, you are the one enjoying the services. You know, you understand? So, it is all about, and you see, they always say they make a lot of profit every month, but they are continuously doing marketing. 
They're continuously doing marketing. But the unfortunate thing is that um, the, the owners of Safaricom takes a hundred percent profit, and you are you you, you are left continuing looking for more money to do what to pump into this phone. You get the point. But today I'm going to share you with you a system where you you take seventy percent. And the, and the owners of the system takes 30%. So whose business is this? It is my business, isn't it? So, and that is where now, the type of business we are doing, network marketing business, which is um, a net, network for people. People is equal to money. The more you, you have a network, you know, I remember in one of his books, uh, Donald Trump said that your network determines your net worth. Your network determines your net worth. If your network is just here, little in, I mean, you you cannot measure your worth. But if your network, it, you know, stretches across to Bomet, to Nakuru, to Mombasa, to uh, Kampala, you know, Rwanda, that is Kigali, go to Dar es Salaam, you know, we can now think this guy has a network, isn't it? Yes. You, when you ask, you know, um, when you say uh, you have only five friends, you are a very poor man. You're a very poor man. If you have a system to make money, you uh, might not uh, get more, more money. So this is where network marketing business, and this is where Nova's force. This is where the rich people are. Now, let's talk about I before I conclude. I stands for investors. Investors are owners of investments. They own what? They own investments. They own investments. These are guys who are in real estate. These are guys who have constructed um, uh, hotels and where their money works for them. Money works for you. Yeah? It's just like even our system as well. Our system falls here and it also falls here. As an investor, you put your money, money works for you. There's somebody like who puts up a hotel like this and uh, people come in. They sleep, they pay money, they eat, they pay money, they, they do meetings, they pay money, and whether it is uh, winter or summer, whether it is raining, whether it's hot or whatever, you know, money is flowing, money is getting them money. These are people who can go on a holiday and they, they are still monitoring their, their, their income using their tablets, you know, you are seeing the money coming in. Money has been put in your account throughout. So this is somebody who can be also owning um, um, rentals, you no, know, rental homes. You don't need to to, 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 to to bother yourself a lot. You wake up the day at the end of the month, your money has been put into the account. If somebody has not put into the account the money you just cross there with a very big padlock at a pesa raka sana kwa account. So these are these two people these two people, this is where we belong. While these guys are sharing, while these guys are sharing, here we control. <laughs> we do what? We control. We control 97% of the world economy and we are only 3% of the world population. That explains why uh, in your village you could have only one person having a Range Rover or having one person in the whole county, in sub county, driving a Range Rover. Of course, some Range Rovers are taken, uh, taken through loans, you understand? But uh, people who, who are rich, who have money, who have systems that work for them, they are very few. The people who control the economy of the world are only 3% of the world population, and we control 97% of the world economy. Now, the distance between the wrong side, and this one now, I don't call it left, I call it the wrong side. The distance between the wrong side and the right side, because this is the right side to be, is not your inheritance. It is not your level of education. It is not your background. It is not your background. It is not anything else other than your thinking. This thin line between the wrong side is your thinking. Change your thinking, change your lifestyle. That's what Napoleon Hill said in his, in his uh, book, uh, Think and Grow Rich, that our thoughts makes us to be who we are. If you are an open-minded person, you are open to ideas, open to opportunities, and you will be able to try every opportunity. And the, and the, 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 the more you are that kind of personality, the closer you are towards your success. 
but if you are rigid, you are a teacher, you say, me, I'm a teacher, me, I'm an engineer, I'm a doctor, I'm, I'm just want to get my, you know, I have a calling. <laughs> you know, you are not called, I'm a doctor, I'm, it's not called, we are not called. It's because we need money, we practice, that is why most of the time doctors go on strike, why? It's not a calling, a calling is, you know, you must be a philanthropist then. But how can you become a philanthropist when you don't have? How do you help people when you don't have? You help people when you have. Hello? Are we together? Yes. You help people when you have. And for you to have, you must change your thinking. You cannot be doing the same thing repeatedly, day in, day out, and expect different results. That one is a lie. You, even if you do, you are a teacher, you go to school every day, work, going back to school, uh, coming in the evening, doing your scheme of work, doing all those kind of things. And even if you pray 24-7, there is no miracle if you don't change your thinking. There is no miracle if you don't look around for a different opportunity. So, guys, the distance between the wrong side and the right side is your thinking. Change your thinking, change your lifestyle. Yes, your attitude determines your altitude. Your attitude determines your altitude. When I got this, when I got this, I jumped, I, when I came back to our country, I was able to look around to find which system can I have, can I attach myself with, and use that system to help people make a difference in their lives. And I jumped in. And within a very short time, it took me less than 120 days, and I fired my boss. When did I fire my boss? Because already I was making more than my boss. So what you need to do is to change your thinking. Be an open-minded fellow. When your mind is open, you are able, you are safe. I, I compare always the human mind with a, with a parachute. A parachute when it opens after jumping out of the uh, aeroplane or helicopter, if it doesn't open, you crash. But if it opens, you enjoy the descent. You enjoy the descent and even the, the visibility, you enjoy everything until you land safely. So if your mind is like a closed parachute, you crash your life day in, day out. But if it is open, you change your thinking every time, you will be able to, to, to say, no, this vehicle is not going to take me to my destiny. In fact, it's too slow. So you, can, you have a right to stop, jump out of that vehicle, and board a new one, which is the fastest one. Are we together? So guys, that is why, this is where, why the world is crying. But people are not open to new ideas. When you tell somebody, just leave your, whatever you're doing. I'm not telling you to leave your teaching. I'm not telling you to leave your profession or career. Just jump into the system that I'm going to share with you right now. And within a short time, you will see that money is flowing a lot from the system that you have been given. And from then, down the line right now, I'm eight years old or nine years old after I fired my boss and soaring high and traveling from one country to another. It was because of COVID that we had to, to suppress a mock door. But um, you can travel. You know, what our desire, and I know it's the desire of everyone, is financial freedom and freedom of lifestyle. Where you can walk into a supermarket and not ask for uh, the cost of the item. You just pick it. Huh? You just pick it. At the end of the, the teller, you just produce your visa card and swipe. You don't care how much you've spent. Because as you, even as you, as, you, as you do what you're doing, you're earning money. How many of us want money? How many of us love money? Let me not say international law of attraction. There is no shortcut. Whatever you love, you attract. I can wake up in the morning and say, today I need a million. And it will come to my way. Somehow, somehow. You know, we have... You know, the, the desire, the desire within you generates some signals that produce opportunity and you find yourself having money in the right way.